Hi, I'm Shaggy. This is my uh, my Vietnam display right here, and we got my Battle of Way over here. We got some wounded Marines who have been stranded for a minute, and they're getting relieved by um, these uh, a company of troops pushing up right here. And they got a machine gun nest to deal with over in the blue house right there. So we'll see how that plays out. You've got some great details on the oh, buildings yeah. there. What? I spent a lot of time looking at photo references and whatnot to really capture the uh, intensity of the urban combat that goes on with this. So I really put, there's lots of, you know, all the buildings are pockmarked. Everything's, you know, pretty destroyed. I got like a big 105 howitzer round crashed through that building there. And, you know, it's completely leveled. So I really spent a, a lot of time with the detail. There was full interiors, but I haven't uh, taken the time to set those up for this display. And then are the minifigures all custom? The minifigures are all Brickmania sticker packs. They work really well. They look good. The blood and gore, that's all custom. So you can see on like the wounded Marines with the AK is over there. That's all custom work. And it, it's pretty simple techniques. It's just, you know, um, some food coloring and you have a little cotton swab and you just apply it until it looks right. And the texturing landscaping is really nice too, Thank kind of those garden you. areas. Yeah, making sure you blend the tile with the plate and everything to get it look good. And then just a lot of loose brick for the rubble. And then what's this next section over here? This is all the Vietnam gun trucks. So they, the convoys in Vietnam, they didn't get hit very often in the beginning of the war. But the NVA realized they had to cripple the American air power somehow. And when you have 30 of those fuel trucks running in a convoy at one time, you know, that's pretty vulnerable. And originally, they only get protected by two of these Jeeps with only two M60s. And that's all you get. So they got ambushed. There was a convoy headed from Pleiku to Da Nang. They get ambushed within 15 minutes. 29 trucks are destroyed. Yeah, they're taking 90% losses. And this happens week after week after week. And they can't, you know, they got to respond somehow. And they do. They respond by making these. It's not completely done. It's still a work in progress. But this is the original first generation gun trucks. They ship in armor plating from the US and they just bolt it onto the side of a deuce and a half. And then have the ammo box in the back, and it'll have other features eventually. And then what are the other examples here? So from there, that doesn't work out very well, and you know, they don't have enough firepower. They need more guns. You know, they're, they're still they're facing RPGs, you know, dish guns, all that sort of stuff. So they take an APC, and they strip the road wheels right off of it. They throw it in the back of a five-ton truck. They scrounge up any other heavy weapons they can get, and bam, they call them instant gun trucks but there's still a problem. They're top heavy. They like to roll over on themselves and in the mountain passes, that's no good. So they upgrade once again. They find that they have these, you know, quad 50s at all these fire bases and they're just sitting around. NVA, they have no air force pretty much to speak of in South Vietnam. So they're like, fine, we're just gonna throw them on the back of a deuce and a half. They make an armored sled for it and, uh, you know, toss that in, toss the gun in and those go rolling down. And that shoots, you know, uh, 2,500 rounds of you know, 50 cal in a minute, so it's pretty deadly. Only problem is they don't sweep very low, so the NVA and stuff, they'd start, you know, entrenching themselves really close to the tree line so that they could get up on these things. So, you know, it's still not working out, and that's when they finally get to the perfect design, which is right here. It's two-layered armor, so you have armor plating just like this, and then you have a gap, so when an RPG round hits it, the spalling effect is completely defeated. More armor plating, sandbags, armor plating. And that's how the walls of these ones are built and those ones. And that's in 1972 when they finally realized how that stuff works. And so interesting bits of the history, a lot of these guns aren't even authorized to be on these trucks. The mini guns you see on the Untouchable, the dual 50s here, they're all stolen. They're, they're scrounging these weapons, they're scrounging their ammunition because they're not a combat unit, it's a transportation unit. They're not supposed to even see combat to begin with. But because they're the, you know, the weak spot for the American air power, the NVA is now hitting them pretty heavily. And so they respond with uh, this interesting bit of history right here. And you've got this nice battle scene laid out here as yeah. well. I got, um, you know, they're entrenched here, hitting, they would have hit this gun truck. You can see it's pretty damaged in the front right here. RPG round would have taken it. He's since uh, met his fate, but, and then you got the, the fuel truck all jackknifed up there. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's all just, it's playing out the untouchable is uh, it would have been further down in the convoy and it's since rolled up. So the job of these gun trucks is when contact first happens, you got to respond and you respond with, you know, rushing into the zone with your heavy weapons to relieve, you know, all the guys who are trapped in the kill zone because now you have overwhelming firepower. Because when three of these things show up, because they run three trucks per... Um, convoy? You know, yeah, per convoy. You, you want like one truck per ten other trucks. And, you know, once contact happens, they're responding, they're jumping into that combat zone, and they're going to overwhelm them with their miniguns, their 50 cals, and personal weapons until, you know, the firefight sizzles out, because eventually air power shows up, 
and that's when the enemy will always disengage and you know retreat back into their tunnels as you know any Vietnam nut uh, knows about all the, the tunnels and whatnot. Fascinating history and these are yeah. really well done builds so thanks so much for taking us through the story of these and bringing yeah. the builds out here. Uh, I, uh, my pleasure honestly you have with the gun jeep so that's the command vehicle just the last little bit of info on it that would go up and down the convoy you know making sure everything's running smoothly and whatnot. Thank you so much. Yep thank you.